Person where they do evil, no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man too they talk. He too they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepe. But every day, then they took money in buck. One man begin, they the street they hug. Still them talk say, make we no talk. But thank God say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah. Morning to you once again, good afternoon to you, and good evening. To you from wherever you are watching from, it is my lie. <laughs> the caption of this broadcast. Okay, share it, read the description as well. And like it. Tell your friends and not your not so friendly friends. Tell them that my guti my guti day again. Thank you very much, Iru. I have started going to the gym once every week. As I can manage, and wearing a tighter shirt tonight makes me feel like, oh, I look good. That's gonna look good on me, kind of. I don't mind. The type of shaky that uh, Tipnubu and his gang that they are unleashing on you. It is a confusing one whereby, uh, as they are launching the uh, Shege, uh, they are they seem to always have the easy target, the people you are likely going to blame, or you will still suffer the Shege. Read the caption of the broadcast. <laughs> We are starting in a minute, and I will continue to apologize for the poor uh, background uh, music, okay? But again, you see why we do this before we start? It's just to give people time to settle in, some people to receive the notification and join. Okay, if you are watching the replay, you can always fast forward. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me once again from wherever you are watching from. Uh, it is Mayegun live for those who are watching live. Okay. And uh, I hope you have actually taken your time to read the uh, description, generally the description of uh, the chat uh, tonight. And that is going to be like, uh, you know, the table of contents of what we are going to be discussing tonight thank you so much to every one of you who has uh, really shared this however we will start with uh, the announcement made by the nigeria presidency now nigeria presidency is the seat of power of uh, the regime tiknumbu's regime you used to that right right remember that uh, tiknumbu launched a probe 
on the Central Bank of Nigeria immediately after Bokuari handed over to him. Emefioli was arrested and was put uh, on trial and then they launched uh, an investigation. Uh, what do you call that thing that they have in this America? Uh, is that called a special, uh, I think it's a special investigator, kind of. So a man named Obase added that investigation to probe how Bokuari, his family, as well as the entire gang of criminals and terrorists, of course, they have participated in pillaging, looting, desecrating, devaluing of everything Nigeria in eight years. And I said then that it is just like Dasuki 2.0, something to entertain the people for a while. And then, uh, you know, uh, even though it's going to be so difficult for them to really blame uh, Bokuari publicly or directly, except indirectly, okay? So it was pretty much like a show. But nevertheless, we will pay attention to some of the exposés that will come out from there, probe it, other than what they would like you to possibly know. And we did that for a while. What's the moment we realized that Dangote, that, uh, was build, that is building a refinery in Nigeria, has entered an arrangement where Dangote's loan, to start with, the loan he took from the European Union uh, investors or so for his uh, refinery. It was Nigeria that stood guarantor as surety for him. So which means if Dangote didn't pay, Nigeria would pay. Furthermore, it was through this dear Angaru investigation of Tifnumbu that we also found out that Dangote did not pay back 70% of the money borrowed him. And how much was the money? Over $10 billion hmm? was traced to over $10 billion memo was raised and approved. And total of that was moved in the name of Dangote Refinery. So if he had paid back 70% of the money, where is it? So we figured out that Dangote didn't pay any shishi back. Also, we also figured that the money they gave to him was divided into two. One to act like a loan, the other one to act like an investment. Okay? That was like another set of billions in the same 10 billion. Part of it is to make it look like Nigeria's investment in the Dangote refinery. They call it 25%. We do not know those who are actually holding the shares for Nigeria. But as to say, part of that money was loaned, others, the other part is investment. And this investigation made us realize that. So the point that eh, it was this investigation too that made us realize as well that the uh, guys who had access to the Central Bank of Nigeria, majority of them relatives of uh, Bukwari, and in one on one instance, right? In one, I mean, so on one occasion, they wrote a memo. Now these people also make us realize. So sure you get that. A memo of $6.5 million, okay, was raised and paid. This was raised, listen to this, $6.5 million was raised from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF. And that is uh, Babashi Lawa's their cousin, Boss Mustafa. Remember Babashi Lawa, the grass cutter, the man that used to run 42 million era to cut grass eh, around the abandoned building where they claimed uh, refugees, Boko Haram refugees were residing. They called them, in, I mean, uh, what do you call them again? Eh? IDP camp, internally displaced people camp. So Babashi Lawa, who came in with Bokwari as SGF of Nigeria, ended up being sacked by Pastor Ruga because of over 16 or so billion Naira Broad. Now, when uh, the arrangement was, they would sack him, then his own uh, brother or cousin, Boss Mustafa, would replace him. That was the deal. Now, that same Boss Mustafa's office in this probe also fingered that 
6.5 million dollars was raised by that office and it was raised for the approval of Bokwari. Bokwari minuted on the memo, signed it, and he sent it back to the same boss Mustafa. Boss Mustafa minuted on it for approval and sent it straight to the Central Bank of uh, Nigeria, Eme Fiole. Eme Fiole lifted the money, $6.5 million, and handed it over to a man who is also standing trial with uh, Eme Fiole in that kangaroo trial, shall you get. So they handed over that $6.5 million to the office of the SGF. And who was in charge of the office of the SGF? Who was the SGF? Boss Mustafa. So he's the only, he happened to be the only person invited by the Obase investigation. And when he appeared, again, when he also appeared, sorry, when he appeared at Obase's investigation, he appeared as a witness not as a participant. They lifted $6.5 million on the eve of election. And they said the money was meant for uh, foreign election observers who were coming to inspect their election last year. So when they called Boss Mustafa, $6.5 million was paid to your office. And a man in your office has been arrested. And you, did all the approval, including Bokuari. Boss Mustafa said they must have forged his signature. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the Tifnubu's investigation put down. He said they must have forged the signature. What about the money? He knows nothing about the money. What about Tifnubu? I mean, Bokuari's signature? They must have forged it too. Nigeria media just ran with that. Bokwari's signature, Boss Mustafa's signatures were, were forged in the 6.5 million election observers uh, scam. The bottom line is $6.5 million is gone. The real culprits have already been absolved. Okay? Bokwari was never invited, including others like that. They also depleted the Central Bank of Nigeria under Bokwari, including the NNPC. So they were all spared. And at a point, as usual, the investigator became investigated. Corruption is investigating corruption. Corrupt criminals probing corrupt criminals. Have you ever seen where uh, police and the uh, army in Nigeria? Eh? Have you ever seen where they uh, disagreed on whether to collect a bribe or not to collect a bribe? Have you ever seen that? It is called Esprit de Corps. Corruption can fight corruption. Are you listening? Of course you are. Corruption can fight corruption. So at the end of the day, they said Obase himself eh, is actually swimming in corruption. Accusation upon allegations. Last, last, they came out today and they said the probe is over. It's done. What about the reports? You may never see the reports, ever. It's the similar to that of uh, Dasuki. All right? Because at the end of the day, you remember when they were probing Dasuki? That Dasuki eh, uh, squandered $2 billion. The money meant for the fight against Boko Haram. A lot of you believed that because APC really, really ran. They run you streets. They actually run you streets. A lot of you have come out of it and you are more angry today because nine years ago, eh, some of you were actually thinking these criminals will change Nigeria and discovering that you have been scammed at the end of the day, makes you more angrier. When you see other people who are still parroting the defense of these rogues, it gets you more angrier, right? Uh, you see, when uh, they were probing Dasuki, they said, Dasuki, as the NSA, the position that Ribadu is holding today, which is the National Security Advisor, to the president, 
However, there are some certain things that makes them powerful. Money is also included. You have heard about the state governors collecting security votes, security votes. In a single year, Nigeria state governors, they are deducting over 110 billion Naira on for security votes that they do not account for at all. Yeah? But a lot of you never ask about the security vote of the president of a country that has been battling with uh, terrorism. And unfortunately, the same country that used to go on peace mission, eh? quenching rebellion and then a redeem, you know, a sort of, a, you know, breaking the ranks of a rebels across Africa is now a country that can no longer defeat extreme, I mean, the extremist uh, Islamic terrorists. And normally, the security vote money is not the money anybody accounts for. It was during the probe of Dasuki that we discovered that this, uh, the state governors in Nigeria get or removed security vote from their own allocations every month before they even pay the salaries of anybody. But the president of Nigeria received his own uh, security vote in dollars. Yes, you heard me right, in dollars. It was so huge and so secretive that good luck, Ibiri Jolantan, eh, actually told me, I mean, put, uh, uh, what do you call his name? Dasuki, Sambo Dasuki in charge of that money. And the money was domiciled in the Central Bank of Nigeria. Guess who was the Central Bank governor then? Eh? Eme Fioli. Eme Fioli as the Central Bank governor under good luck, Egbere Jolantan, at the time, hmm? supervised the disbursement of that $2 billion. But here is the what they told people. Indeed, security vote is also for what? To provide security somehow, a special force, a special squad funded by the president to provide security, you would believe, right? But they didn't use it for that. They were sharing the money. Baba, it was also the time that as some of them in PDP were collecting their share from the office of Dasuki through the Central Bank of Nigeria, Suki will raise the memo. Eme Fiole will load the APC, the, what do you call that? Uh, is that not called Amok? Okay, maybe no Amok person in career. Bullion vans, right? Suki will raise the memo. Eme Fiole will release the cash. In the process of raising memo, releasing cash, it was uh, towards the 2020, I'm sorry, 2015 elections. And somehow, somehow, eh, the Boko Haram attempted to kill Boko Hari in Kaduna, and they missed. And Boko Hari came out of the bomb blast, the roadside bomb. And he came out of the blast on scratch, right? He walked around front, back, everywhere, he went back into his car, and he drove off. And that was the news that an attempt was made on the life of Boko Hari. But you know something? That's what the news said. Behind the scene, the office of Ribadu raised a memo that Bokwari should be given $300,000 and two bulletproof SUVs that actually cost Nigeria over 800 million naira at the time, nearly a billion. Bokwari collected SUV, collected cash. When the pro got to that stage, they canceled the entire, they, they, they continued the probe. They said they, if they, they, the only way they would probe their suki further eh, was to probe him in camera, which means nobody will see it. They will just do it behind the scene and make pronouncements. When they realized that that won't work, they just told their suki to enjoy himself for the meantime because people believe that they caught a thief. They didn't know that the thief catcher is actually Uluri Uli. Was Bokwari. That was the end of the whole probe. Today, Eme Fiuli, which has been pushed forward, the guy that has been thrown under the bus, 
if I told you, I said, if they really wanted to prosecute a Mepioli for his crime, eh, 90% of everybody who took appointment from Bokwari, they will be in jail now. No, no joke, including Bokwari and Pastor Ruga. These guys destroyed Nigeria, Baba. Economically, that you can't recover. You can't. I know some of you have this sort of uh, belief that this problem is basically about uh, whoever is uh, in Abuja. You have no idea. The rot beyond Abuja. You see the, the established rot in Abuja that you see there, which is called federal government, that a lot of you know much about is just uh, the poster, uh, sort of uh, the poster boy for the real rot that exists in all of the federating units. The rot is so deep that they have become laws themselves. So when you want to start some 